Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa coming to you from Chicago, USA, sitting in for David Kerr, who is off today. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Pope Francis has reiterated the need for unity among churches. While meeting with a delegation of the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople, the Holy Father said on Thursday that reconciliation between separated Christians contributes to peace between people in conflict. It was on the day after the Solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul that the Pope met with the Greek Orthodox delegation. It is a long-standing tradition to exchange delegates on this feast day to build unity between the Catholic and Orthodox churches. The Holy Father said that their presence was a source of great joy as it manifests the closeness and fraternal charity of the Orthodox Church towards the Church of Rome. He also said that amid the scandal of war, the concern of believers should not be talking and discussing. Instead, it should be on helping others and for experiencing conversion. Finally, after 18 days of violent protest in Ecuador, the national strike called by the indigenous organizations has come to an end with the mediation of the Catholic Church. On June 30th, the agreement was reached between the government and the representatives of the indigenous communities. The agreement was signed at the parish hall of Santissima Trinidad in the capital, Quito. It was signed in the presence of Bishop Luis Cabrera, the president of the Episcopal Conference. On June 13, a national strike was called by the Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities of Ecuador seeking a reduction in fuel prices and guarantees in fair prices on essential items. The signing ceremony was attended by CONA President Leonidas Iza, Gary Espinosa of the National Confederation of Peasant, Indigenous, and Black Organizations, and Eustachio Tuwala of the Council of Evangelical Indigenous Peoples and Organizations of Ecuador. Here in the U.S., President Joe Biden has proposed that senators withdraw a legislative obstacle to reinstating abortion rights that were revoked by the Supreme Court on June 24. The president's bid to temporarily remove the Senate filibuster was rebuffed by aides to Democratic senators Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin. While addressing the media during a NATO event in Madrid, Biden had said that laws have to be passed to make abortion a right in all 50 U.S. states. However, his statement will remain more of a gesture unless it garners sufficient votes in Congress to suspend the filibuster. News agency Reuters quoted a spokesman of Manchin and an aide to cinema as saying that both oppose suspending the filibuster and their positions have not changed. On Thursday, June 30th, Governor Ron DeSantis of the U.S. state of Florida announced that he would appeal a court verdict that blocks the enactment of the anti-abortion law passed in April. It was in April that the governor signed into law House Bill 5, which bans the termination of pregnancy after 15 weeks unless the health of the mother is in peril or if the baby is deformed. It was Leon County Circuit Judge John Cooper who announced that he would issue a temporary injunction against the ban on abortion, terming it unconstitutional. This prompted the governor to appeal the ruling. The U.S. Supreme Court has come out with a 5-4 to four decision that allows the Biden administration to terminate the Trump-era Remain in Mexico asylum policy. The court ruled that the Secretary of Homeland Security's termination of the Migrant Protection Protocols, or the MPP, was lawful. When the policy was introduced, it was criticized by church leaders who argued that it disregards human dignity. It was also accused of violating non-refoulement obligations under the U.S. and international law. It prohibits the practice of repatriating refugees and asylum seekers to territories where they face threats to life and liberty.
The ruling was welcomed by Chairman of the U.S. Episcopate's Committee on Migration's Chairman Bishop Mario Dorsonville, the Auxiliary Bishop of Washington. In a statement, the prelate said the court decision preserves the executive branch's ability to reverse untenable, illegal, and immoral practices regardless of who is in office. Attacks against Catholic churches and pro-life pregnancy centers are continuing after the epic-making reversal of Roe v. Wade by the U.S. Supreme Court. Soon after the reversal of Roe, a pregnancy clinic in Salt Lake City was destroyed by vandals. On June 25, many pro-life centers and churches were damaged. The St. Patrick Catholic Church in Philadelphia was vandalized with pro-abortion graffiti. Similar attacks took place on a pro-life sign at St. Teresa of Avila Church in Kansas and All Saints Catholic Church in Portland. Vandals also broke into the mobile clinic of Options Health in California. Alongside St. Louis Catholic Church in Bellevue, Washington, was also the victim of anti-Catholic vandalism and violence that is sweeping the country. The church has decried the attacks against pro-life centers, to which the authorities have not given much concern. The Holy Father Pope Francis has lauded the new president of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcus Jr., on his inauguration. The pontiff sent a message to the new president, assuring him of his best wishes through the apostolic nuncio, Archbishop Charles Brown. In his message, the Holy Father said, quote, In assuring you of my prayers that you will be sustained in wisdom and strength, I invoke Almighty God's blessing of peace and prosperity upon the nation. End quote. This message was read out by the Nuncio during the Pope's Day Mass at the Manila Cathedral on June 29. It was on Thursday, June 30th, that the new president was sworn in as the successor of Rodrigo Duterte. He came to power after winning a landslide victory in the election held last month. Earlier, the nuncio has promised the president-elect that the church would collaborate with the government. As Egypt marks the ninth anniversary of the June 30 revolution that overthrew the Muslim Brotherhood government of Mohamed Morsi, churches have issued statements hailing the historical event. On June 29, Coptic Orthodox Patriarch Tawadros II said that the June 30 revolution saved Egypt from chaos and darkness. The Patriarch also lauded President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, the armed forces, and the Egyptian people and expressed gratitude to God for the blessings bestowed on the country. He implored the Almighty to continue to bless the land that was visited by Jesus and which welcomed the Holy Family. Coptic Catholic Patriarch Ibrahim Isaac Sidrak, who is the President of the Council of Catholic Patriarchs and Bishops in Egypt, also sent a laudatory telegram to the President. He congratulated the President on the anniversary of the revolution on behalf of all Catholics in the country. With Kenya's elections fast approaching, the Catholic bishops of the East African country have urged civilians not to fall for the bribes of politicians, encouraging all civilians to vote wisely and stay united in peace. The prelates appealed to voters to choose leaders who work for the common good. In a message, Bishop Dominic Kimenjik of Eldoret Diocese urged Kenyans, quote, not to be given money in order to vote, end quote. Separately, in a video message, Bishop Joseph Mairura Okemwa of Kisi Diocese also warned the civilians against politicians offering bribes. The bishops also assure their prayers for a peaceful election. The country is going to the polls on August 9 to elect a new president, members of parliament, governors, and members of local assemblies. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.